Hey guys, um, I got some comments on the last video saying that they wanted a voiceover of the no hit run I did. So I figured I'd do that and um, I wanted to start with a quick overview of the build itself. So this is the character I did it on. As you can see, here's the original sin I got. I'm actually kind of scared of handling it, so I'm going to leave the corner. But um, basically it's a storm brand of indecision character along with penance brand of dissipation. These two gems are extremely overtuned right now, and they just make the run, I think, as easy as it's ever been, except for in the original league. Um, due to Sanctum 2.0 changes, you need a lot more damage, and I, I want to say more speed too, and also more skill. Uh, the trap rooms are harder, the arena rooms are harder, the bosses are way more tanky, and they have to be in... Um, area level 83 areas so your build has to be pretty strong um so this is the overview it's basically min maxed for brand attachment range um you can see i have some pretty good gear pieces on i'll open the, up the pob in a second but like basically i have brand attachment range everywhere i can get it so the amulet 44 percent 20 percent the gloves running four clusters with Grand Design Remarkable, and then I won with the Grand Design Secret Runes, which I'll talk about in a second. And then these have Grand Design Remarkable, Grand Design Remarkable. Um, so basically, the this character is giga cast speed, right? Because you want to be fast. Um, mediocre move speed, because you don't actually want all that mo much movement speed for the run. And then... Just, you know, cast speed and burn attachment range and damage. That's all it is. So, if I open the POB. You can see I'm running Storm Random Indecision right now in the main thing. And it says 132 million. This is doubled because of Runebinder. So, it's actually 260 million on Storm Brand. And then in full configuration, I'm actually running Penance Brand. This 2.3 billion damage is at max ramp on my Penance Brand of Indecision with, I think, no Swift Brand. Uh, it might be Swift Brand in that setup. Yeah, it will be. So, no Swift Brand, I'm, a, I'm at about 2.1 billion DPS, which is, you know, more than enough. And in the actual run itself, I got very lucky with both uh, boons that give me more damage with 50% more damage and monsters have 30% less life. So in this POB, you can see I have 8.8 .8 meters of attachment range. Now, something to know in Sanctum is that you can't actually damage monsters if they're more than 10 meters away from you. So this number doesn't really mean anything past a certain point. However, it still does, which I'll explain. So if I open up POB again, say I am right here and I place a brand here and there's a monster 10 meters over here in the corner. So these brands will jump because they're still in range. However, once they jump, this monster's now, say, it's 12 meters away from me, so I can't actually damage it. But these brands will still be on the monster. So as soon as I walk into the frame, right, this monster will be instantly frozen, which is very important. Um, I open the POB again. So the monster will be instantly frozen because I have 100% crit chance and I'm dealing all cold damage due to my Call of the Brotherhoods. Um, the attachment range is 8.8 .8 meters when I immediately cast the brand, however it's way more than that after a little bit of ramp, and in the run itself I'll show you that I really, I place brands, right, leave them, because they last I think 13 seconds, I run away, stand in a corner, and then everything dies. And these brands, as they sit here, they're detached, right, so, they're gaining 20% brand attachment range per second, up to 100%. So if I go in this POB, and I configure this to say 100% brand attachment range, all of a sudden I have 12 meters of attachment range. This is, you know, it's enough. It's exactly what you want. It's as, as much as you can. Um, the goal is to get as much cast speed as you can, as much brand attachment speed, and as much damage. And all those things scale both skills, the only thing that I'm doing to enable both, what I'm trying to find here it is, um, the only thing I'm doing to enable both is actually running this mastery, which is 40% of lightning of physical damage converted to lightning damage. And in that sense, I can one-to-one -one gem swap them, as I'll show you in the video. So let's get into that. Okay, 
So here's the video. It's actually frozen. Let me play it. Okay. So now it's running. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the relics I'm running. So I'm running seven. Two additional rooms are revealed in Sanctum Map. These are pretty rare to get. It took me around 250 Sanctums to get in SSF to get these with 80% quant on gear. Um, quantity of relics, that is. Which gives Lycia a chance to drop two, uh, two relics. So, and uh, the original scripture, by the way, took, I think, 220 runs to get, and I think that's lucky. So if you're trying to get one on SSF, good luck. It's very rare. In those 222 sanctums, I only got one staff relic as well. They're both very rare. So right here, what I'm doing, I'm going to pause it real quick. I'm looking at all the rooms on the map because I have 14 additional rooms are revealed, right? So you can see three plus two is five plus nine is nine, uh, plus four is nine and then two and three so that's what 14 so i got a little bit unlucky in that two of the rooms that were revealed are the rooms here which i know anyway because they're right in, one right in front of me so floor one all i'm looking for is bad afflictions every single room type is very easy so let's see here's fiendish wings this one is very bad uh, means I can't freeze them, and also, since I can't freeze them, I deal half as much damage because Heat Shiver is disabled. Um, they also can't be chilled, so I don't get that buff either. So, I would say Fiendish Wings is one of the worst afflictions you can get. But, in this run, I see mostly changer, Chambers of Inscription, Abandoned Library, and I think I got a Holy's Trials as well. Holy Trials is okay. Um, honestly, it's probably easier than... The other ones, you just risk uh, desync, which is very bad, as you can probably guess. So what I'm doing is placing brands in front of me, because I have massive cast speed, and then simply running into the room. Um, the brands have, by that point, already attached to the enemies, like I said, because of the massive attachment range. And then as soon as I run in range, the enemies are being instantly frozen, and just it being evaporated, basically. Now what's cool about this is that you can wrap, the, wrap them around walls, you can do all sorts of tricks with them, and if you look at my skill bar, actually, you can see that I have a Brand Recall and V, and this is really useful because Brand Recall, if I open the POB back up, I shouldn't have closed this, that's okay though. Um, let's find it. Brand Recall is somewhere. I'm blind. Here it is. Brand Recall, I have uh, Enhance 4, and I think... Oh, this POV is outdated. I also have Empowered 4 on it. So, if I enable this, I gain 1.7 meters of attachment range, and that is because the skill itself gives you 45% increased attachment range on your brands. So, when you're running around walls and you already have things brands casted, what you can do is, um, if you already have, have brands behind you because they have massive duration, like 13 seconds, if you run around a wall and all of a sudden there's enemies in front of you, you can simply cast them to yourself by using brand recall, which is really nice. You'll see me do that a few times, probably in this room, let's see. So I'm clearing out right, then left, and then I'm dashing in, or not dashing in that time, but see at the very end I casted Brain Recall. So they just simply gain a lot of attachment range and it makes it a lot safer for me. So I'm skipping Scriptorium because it's a little sketchy and also because it leads into the uh, Fiendish Wings room, which is pretty bad. Here's our first arena room. So what I'm doing is I'm casting brands in the middle, the bottom, and the top. And what this does is they simply last the whole time. I don't have to cast, and I just only, uh, you know, completely focus on the trap in the middle of the fireball beam. Everything else will never hit me no matter what I do because the brands will instantly freeze them as soon as they spawn in. So all I have to do is look at the, the fireball, and or, you know, the fire beam and make sure I'm not basically throwing by hitting it. So now I'm going into Abandoned Library. This Affliction is also free because, you know, you're not going to get the first place, so it doesn't matter. Um, one thing I'm doing in these rooms is I'm actually swapping out my flasks. 
and I'm only doing this for the escape rooms for find the exit. I'm swapping in a, uh, it's actually a legacy Quicksilver flask with 30% movement speed. And it simply just makes it a little bit more comfortable for me. You can see I'm swapping it back. Um, if I actually go back here, I want to show you the flasks. Okay, so here's this Quicksilver I'm using. It's, you know, Mage Blood Flask. It's it's giving me like 100% movement speed, basically, or even more, like 140. Um, and this lets me run through the blue circle traps on the floor in these rooms really, like, quickly. So I run into them and then run out of them. I don't have to, like, bait them. And I'm swapping it with my other flask, which is back again. That cast speed one. I lost it. There it is. This. It's um uh, it's it's a quicksilver, but it also has cast speed. And effectively this makes the other rooms easier. Um I in an ideal world I would have this cast speed on other mods and I like I would drop um the crit mod on one of my other flasks, but I don't I'm not entirely crit capped for that, so that's a thing to worry about. Um in this case I'm just swapping those two flasks in and out between the escape rooms and the other ones. So let this play out. Oh, this was the Holy Trials. So, all I'm doing here is just playing it safe. And casting brands in front of me where I know enemies are going to be. Uh, one thing to mention is that I'm skipping all rewards for the most part. Until I'm like very confident with the run. Because it just saves, you know, five coins in every run. Or every room. Which could be the difference between getting a boon or not from the merchant. So here's an example where the extra movement speed is helpful, where I'm running through these blue circles on the ground and they explode. If you don't have enough movement speed, they'll actually hit you before you get through, which is not good, obviously. Um, and also, if you have the traps or faster boon, it will hit you anyways before you run through it, so that's very bad. I'm going to pause real quick and go back. Okay, here it is. So I swap my flasks back, or you can see I swap. Yep, swap to my cast speed flask for the boss, and I. Uh, oh, I already ca I put penance brand in anyway. Um, so penance brand is simply my single target skill. Uh, it deals something stupid like six times as much damage as storm brand against single target. The only reason I don't use it for other rooms is because it has around three times slower cast cast time. And I want Stormbrand of Indecision because it has a very quick cast time, like 0.2 seconds or something like that. So you can see after that room, I simply swap back to everything that's comfortable and then keep going. Um, I'll talk about Veracath real quick. For me, I have so much damage that he's not a problem. If you have less damage, you simply cast and then stand behind him. And then he's going to cast his like flame surge thing. And you simply do circles around him and dodge that. It's very simple. You shouldn't have problems with that fight. So I'm doing the same thing in this um, this floor. If this is floor two, I'm going to pause real quick. I'm looking for Decrepit Cellar, Derelict Caverns, and uh, the Arena Room. I don't want to do Gauntlets, worst case. Or Gauntlets are worst case scenario. So here I'm choosing Decrepit Cellar. There was an easier path on the bottom. However, there were three Gauntlets in a row that I chose not to do. The uh, trap rooms that are really bad are floor two gauntlet and floor four. You, they're you know you can do them ninety nine percent of the time without being hit, but the other rooms I can do one hundred percent of the time. So I would rather do the other ones, but pick up maybe a worse affliction or something like that. So now I have battleground. Let's see what happens here. Put in my cast speed flask. And then I simply put brands in the middle and dodge the fire beam. So all I'm doing is running around and waiting for the, you know, waiting for the room to end. That's one of the easiest rooms in the run, I think. So here I can choose between Battlegrounds or I think it was Derelict Caverns at the top. But I get a Benevolent Shrine in the middle, which is pretty good. Because it gives me a guaranteed boon for 150 coins. So that's always a, you know, I always take that. 
So this is derelict caverns. You can see things spawn at the sides. So this room's a little sketchy, and things in front of you can also hit you. So here's an example I want to mention. As I go around this corner, I'm casting Brand Recall right here, and this is giving the brands about around 50% more attachment range or increased, right? And these brands are like immediately going to jump up here and kill anything that's up here, so that it can't hit me by the time I get to it. In that case, nothing was standing close enough for them to do that, but that's a way to make that, you know, much more friendly. So I just gained the boon. You can uh, see an initial room ahead, which is, I think, one of the best in slot boons for this run. Because it makes you, or, you know, it lets you avoid bad room types and it lets you avoid bad afflictions. Here's one of the rooms that a lot of people have problems with, whereas on Stormbrand, it's a complete joke. Um... I'm going to pause it because that went so fast. So what I do is I place brands in the middle of the room as soon as I walk in, cast my Wrath or cast RF, and then go to the top here. And then I simply ping pong back and forth. Now you'll notice that I'm running a blue art righteous fire effect. This is actually for a reason. If I back up, you can see that the fireballs on the floor... Sound gets a little weird. Um... There you go. So these fireball effects, right on the left here and on the right, they're red. And this blue righteous fire, you know, contrasts with them. Whereas if you're running normal RF or any of the other ones, it's very hard to tell if, you know, a fireball is about to hit you or whether that's your RF effect or what. So I purposely run as little MTX as possible. In fact, I'm running invisible aura effects and invisible flask effects in this run so that I can see these fireballs, and that is the sole reason for the very little MTX. It's just so you can see the um, on-ground effects. Another thing that I considered doing while I was practice practicing for this run is literally disabling zealotry before you go into those rooms, because it'll spawn consecrated ground on the floor, and this is not helpful. Here you'll see an example here. This consecrated ground when it hits enemies, <clears throat> It's, it spawns this, like, yellow-red ground, which it's hard to see the difference between that and the fireballs that are coming down. So if you're trying to avoid the fireballs, honestly, you know, maximize visibility is the main thing. Forgot to unmute it. Here we have another derelict caverns. I got pretty lucky in floor two. Well, overall, it was a very lucky run, but... Floor 2 was pretty nice, and then I didn't have to do any gauntlet rooms, and I didn't have to get any bad afflictions, so that was good. Finally, I have a battleground room. This one, I placed brands in the corners, as you can see. One cast in each corner, because I have 7 max brands, so 2, 2, 2, and 1. And then I simply run around, I don't have to cast any more after I cast the first ones, because as mentioned previously, the brands will flash onto an enemy even if I can't damage them, and then as soon as I get within range, they'll be damaged. This is one of the reasons I really like Stormbrand for uh, no hit. Before this, I actually practiced a few times with, you know, Cold Tornado Shot or any of the other ones. I tried Shockwave Totems, I tried um, Hex Blast Mines as well. I landed on Stormbrand because it just felt the most comfy, and honestly, that's just the easiest for the uh, the hard rooms. That boss I'm not even going to talk about because they have so little health, you just place Penance Brand in the middle of the arena, and then they just die within half a second, so. There's no, like, you know, on-hit, on-ground effects you have to avoid or anything like that. So, floor 3 is actually one of the easiest floors in the whole run because... It's, uh, it's gauntlet is a joke. It's very easy to avoid everything, so. Halls of Worship is, in my opinion, the worst room in this floor. Simply because of the blue circles on the ground. And I'm gonna pause real quick. The enemy here, as well, if you're not careful, it can hit you. Even when you're coming around this corner, maybe you place your brands wrong like I did here. So it actually, you know, it pulled back its bow, but it didn't 
get to cast anything because I got a little lucky with my brands. Um, but yeah, you got to be careful in Halls of Worship. This is also one of the only rooms that I really like. don't want to have the uh, no minimap in because I'm personally pretty bad at it. So here I'm just scouting again. So I'm going to do another Halls of Worship probably and then make my way over to that Sanctum Bellum because that's a very easy room. Do you ever notice when any of these pauses, I'm really just, you know, catching my breath after doing these rooms because it's always very stressful every single time, even though I've run each of these, you know, 500 times probably. So I'm going to pause real, real quick here. This is the Inferno in Floor 3 where fireballs fall from the sky. Um, something that makes this room different from the others is that there's two boxes in the middle. This is the only one, I believe, out of the floor, the four floors that has boxes or obstacles in the middle. So I place my brands at the top, one in the mid, or you know, two at the top, two in the middle, two at the bottom, and this effectively covers the entire arena because every single one of these brands can, you know, cast all the way across. So two top, two middle, two bottom, and then I just go to the wall and hug it. This one got a little sketchy because there was a fireball where I was on the wall, so I had to, you know dodge and weave, but with enough practice, those rooms become pretty easy. So looking at boons here, I decided to take Monsters Have Less Life. I could have either taken this or the 50% more Aureus coins. It was kind of up in the air. Realistically, I probably should have taken more Aureus coins found because I have enough damage as is, but it's fine. Sanctum Bellum's a, a free room, that mini boss. He, I don't even know what abilities he's does, he does to be honest i've never seen him cast anything he has so little health same with Mausole mausoleum so here i have another infernum that i have to take actually take my first reward here too i think so in this room all you do is you you, you know you hug the walls the very outer walls and these lasers can never hit you I have my brands pre-placed so that anytime something spawns, it gets instantly frozen and evaporated. Get my coins. Keep going. Take my first reward of the whole run. At this point, I'm starting to get confident. However, floor four, eh, floor floor four is the worst one by far. Again, I'm just, you know, catch my breath, <laughs> lowering my heart rate at this point. Unholy layer is pretty easy. This is the best layout for it, because two of the monsters are guaranteed to spawn at the end. And I have enough attachment range that I can just cheese them with the brands. So all I'm doing in those is spamming brands and running forward. It's, you know, really not much to it. So kind of pick your poison here, Infernum or Halls of Worship. I think I'm a little bit better at Halls of Worship, so I have to choose that one. If, for example, I had, you know, a minimap was hidden, I would probably do the Infernum there. So here's a little bit noteworthy. I'm doing a double gem swap here. I'm putting my uh, Penance Brand in the top left. Or no, Penance Brand in the bottom right here. For plus two levels and then i'm putting my inspiration that i originally had in that spot in the top left and this is giving me a little bit more damage it's something like 10 to 15 percent more than if i just do a one-to-one -one storm brand dependence brand and the reason for this is because floor three boss is notoriously dangerous you have so in this one i pull the whole bag out i cast wrath i put my uh my curse on the ground, what is this? I can't even think of the name, punishment, that's it. I cast my RF and I cast my elemental weakness and this is for uh, the Mark of Terror jewel for Penance Brand. So I cast my brands and you kind of get the voice lines down after doing this a lot, but I simply run around them in a circle. Now, what you have to be careful of is 
as soon as you know you kill him or if he if he survives half a second this can happen but he can put these lasers that cast across the whole arena so as soon as you kill him you can see i'm making a mad dash to leave um another thing that can happen is he can make a beam from the sky that just lands on his body and if you immediately you know pick up the coins that he drops this can hit you even after he's dead so as soon as you kill him you want to you know get the heck out of there so at this point i just gem swap back and i'm just waiting for everything in there to you know to die out so i can go back in safely i would even wait a little bit longer than i did there to be honest See here, we got an Exalted over Rich. That's cool. Alright, Floor 4. So, I am hoping that I don't get an Entombment that I have to take. Because Entombment, I can do it, but it's, you know, the worst run. The worst one. So, looking at this this floor, I see an absolute god layout. I see, what is it, 7 Lost Catacombs and 1 Mausoleum. That is the best possible layout I could have had. I got very lucky in Floor 4. You know, I had literally spent hours practicing, like, Entombment and Desecrated Crypts on this floor. But, didn't need it. Which I'm very happy about. Uh, right here, you can see I'm going back to get the coins I need for this Benevolent Shrine. Lost Catacombs is one of the easiest rooms in the whole run, I think. There's so many places you can bend, uh you know the brands around walls that it really just cheeses the whole thing you can see place brands around the wall and then they just you know completely shred pretty cool so it's at this point that I realize okay I'm getting to the end I'm making it to Lycia no matter what and Lycia is I want to say my least favorite part of the whole thing she used to be my favorite in that she was easy and then i had a few issues with her and that i don't know what it is i still don't know really why but it is irritating that you have according to some people if you have too much damage and you take on lysia she can cast her what is it you cannot escape Baydot's gaze thing even without her dashing first and that skill is completely unavoidable so effectively when i get to lysia i am just hoping that i don't get that skill it's like a one in i'm gonna say one in 20 that she does it and some people say you know you just have to stand close i've tried standing close and i still get it sometimes i think you're it's like a, a bug or something that you have too much damage and she skips a phase or something like that so uh, my only recommendation is to practice her a, a million times. I think before this run, I spent three hours looping through Lycia by literally running in, killing her, and then uh, logging out. And then logging back in, running in, killing Lycia, logging out, etc. So here I'm just getting one last spoon for more damage. These were, you know, lucky. But I don't need them. I have so much damage that at this point I have something like 3 billion probably. 3 billion single target is, you know, slightly, it's like pretty good. I have so I'm going to pause. This is the Lycia fight. This part is harder than the other two, the next two. And the reason for this is dodging her. Um, the, in an ideal world, she's going to dash from this position toward you, right? And 99% of the time she does that. So I precast my brands, I precast my damage, um, and I hope that as soon as she, you know, she dives toward me, I'm gonna dash into this corner, and then she's gonna be phased. One thing you have to prepare for, like I mentioned, is if she casts, you cannot, you know, you cannot escape Beta's gaze, which is that red beam with the lightning tendrils. Um, you have to be prepared to log out. That's my only recommendation. So I am hovering my hand over my, you know, my logout key the entire time I'm here. And as soon as I see or, or hear you, I am pressing that key and I'm getting the heck out. And I'm hoping that it doesn't hit me. 
Um, another thing you have to worry about is if she, if she survives too long, she can dash, and then she can cast, you can, you know, you can't escape beta's gaze. And in that case, what you're going to do, I'm going to continue the recording. So I'm going to dash. And then say right here, if I hadn't phased her yet, she would cast, um, you cannot escape Beidot's gaze. What you can do is you can run behind this wall and hope that it won't hit you. So you can see, if she was still over here alive, I could be right here. And then the wall would block the, the beam. So now I'm just going to take this slow. I'm going to wait for every one of these, like, laser things to go before I run through. Here I spend extra time because there's an extra, there's a mob behind behind these fireballs. So I'm going to wait for these to gain their brand attachment range, and then I'm going to weapon swap to my totem. And block these fireballs. I'm going to wait for this beam again. Run through. I'm going to wait for the fireball to go past, and then dash in the, right in the middle of the two. Yes. And at this point I know I'm, I've won, right? I know I've gotten the ring. I've never failed beyond this point. So... At this point, it's just a DPS check. Um, for the end, what you could, there's, you know, you place brands, you place your your to your uh, RF, all the stuff, you know, the whole bag. And as soon as she like starts moving, I I like to run circles around her. Other people like to blink through her. I don't trust myself to do that, so I I just like to run circles, and I know I have enough damage that I can do that. Uh, now, when I'm prepping for my the final phase, I simply am checking one last time. My, my affliction is to make sure I do not have the lose 10 resolve when you use a flask. Because I'm going to use my Amethyst flask here from Itziri for, you know, as much damage as possible. And I, I want to make sure, because I have not used it yet this run, I think, that I don't have this thing, because that would be a giga throw, right? So I'm just catch my breath, and I'm going to go in. Punishment, Ellie weakness, run in circles, and boom, it's done. And I was very happy, as you can see. <laughs> so yeah, it took about, I want to say, two weeks of farming Sanctums to get the Relic. And then... Another... I think I ran 30 more Sanctums after I actually got it. That's at the end of the clip. Um, I think I ran, you know, 30 more Sanctums after, after I got it for practice. And then... Immediately before the run, I spent a long time looping through entubements and looping through the Lysia fight to make sure I was prepared. Um, in this run, you did not see entubement, you did not see gauntlet in floor two, and you did not see any of the trap, the um, arena rooms in floor four. If you guys, you know, want to see how I do those, I can make another video. Let me know. But yeah, if this was helpful, you know, leave a like, leave a sub. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.